Alrighty guys, it's been a really long time since I've done a sword review and I finally got one. So I really appreciate that you've uh, stuck around this long and haven't jumped ship on me. But anyway, uh, to celebrate recently graduating from broadcasting school, I told myself I would get myself a new sword. And I was doing a lot of scouring the internet and I didn't know what I wanted. I knew what I wanted, but I knew I couldn't afford it at the time. So I decided to kind of, <laughs> I uh, got back on a Bud K, which this video might be a little cringy, so just take it how you will. Um, sometimes you can find tiny little gems on Bud K, and, and they're always cheap, so that's that's one of the benefits. But uh, I went and got something relatively cheap, but it's something that I've wanted for a while. It's also something that I once had before, about five or six years ago. I ended up selling it uh, to fund my you know, latest collection. But I missed it, and it's one of the only swords I ever regretted selling, Have you know, and... Uh, it's a dorky sword. It is. There's no real example of it in history, uh, but it's a sword that I love since childhood, and I've always wanted one ever since I was a little kid. And uh, I, I decided to buy it again, and that is the wow. yes, the Shinwa <laughs> Full Tang Fighting Ninja Katana Sword, as it's called on Bud K. Uh, it's just your barrack, basic Americanized ninja sword um it's say what you will about the ninjato and and all that stuff it's a hollywood creation there's no historical examples of it in, in medieval japanese history say with it what you will if it existed cool if it didn't exist cool all i know is it existed when i was a little kid in the 80s and i was obsessed with ninjas just like any other red-blooded kid you know growing up back then and i watched show kosugi movies just all the time and he always had that sword the iconic sword which was you know kind of like you know square suba right here square you know cross guard and straight blade and uh this one actually is a little bit different and i'll pull it out for you but so this one when i got it it did it came with <laughs> that tactical kind of cheesy cringy uh blackened uh layer to it which anodized i don't know how they do it but <laughs> i guess it's to like help you hide in the shadows whatever um but yeah the ninja sword from that i remember growing up in the 80s always had that straight blade uh usually it was a lot shorter than a katana uh, this blade is actually it's kind of long it's a 28 inch blade uh the handle itself overall is 12 inches so the overall i have this written down too the overall length is 41 and three fourths of an inch long. So it's a long sword. It's a lot longer than what you consider a traditional ninja sword, um, but it has all the characteristics. And what I liked about it when I had it last time was everything was really tight fitting. Everything was really nice and firm and tight fitting. And <laughs> with this guy, you get what you pay for. Um, and it was cheap. It was like 70 bucks. You know, what's, how bad is that? You know, that's, I make that on table at Outback on a good night, a party. But anyway, it is 1045 carbon steel, so it's right at that lower end of passable steel for swords. Um, it came fairly sharp. It, it cut paper out of the box. Um, and like I said, the, the blade is blackened. It is hand forged, or it is hammered at least, because you can see, you can see the, the ripples and the in the dips in the steel, you know, from where it got struck. But I seriously doubt it was made by like a wizened, you know, sage in a forge somewhere in Japan. It was made in a factory in China. Um, but like I said, it was just a sword that I've always wanted ever since childhood. And I told I told you you guys a while back that I probably would never buy another Japanese style sword, which is still kind of true. I I love katanas; they're beautiful, but. That phase just came and went, and I'm more still focused on European style, but I just had to have a ninja sword again, and I just kind of, you know, I just kind of indulged myself and got one again, and I'm, Scalagrim has a really good video about this sword, uh, which I won't try to go over things that he already went over, but I will concur with him that it is a nice beater. Um, it'll cut water bottles just fine, because I remember mine... <laughs> I hacked up plenty of milk jugs and, and fruit and stuff like that, and it held up just fine. Um, and the fittings always held up nice and, and, and tight. And the only thing is, <laughs> you get what you pay for. It's Chinese, but 
close up here, you can see the little Shinwa laser etched on there, the little logo. Hmm, whatever, it's small, I don't care. And then on the other side, it has like a little, you know, carbon steel. Hmm, it is. But I think this is called the Habaki, or I can't remember exactly all my Japanese terms for swords, but this is nice and tight. Um, this is nice and tight. There's no moving of the tang in the wooden core of the handle when I move it around. Um, it is light. It's very light. Um, maybe, I don't know, I don't, have to, I don't have anything to weigh stuff on, so maybe two pounds, whatever. It's not heavy. I think Skull showed you the balance. It's like right around, right around like right here. So it does balance out. And the neat thing is, even though it's cheap, it comes with distal taper, which means that looking at it edgewise, it starts thick at the base and slowly grows, you know, thinner towards the point, which I think is cool on an economy sword. Um, even some of my European ones don't have distal taper. But anyway, uh, oh, what I was gonna show you too, is the pegs, now the handle itself, totally everything is fake on this. It's fake ray skin, um, it's just cotton wrap. Uh, these are, I think, brass and then maybe cast iron right here. Um, and the thing about, sometimes when they're cheap, like Skull said, these tend to pop off if you're not careful, or over time the wood shrinks and and they can tend to pop off, so you'd have to re-glue it. But the, the wrap is tight, fine, totally, totally fine, like all the older ones I've had. But if you look, can't, I don't know if you can see it or not, but the pegs were just, looked like something just rammed them in there and they just broke them off. Didn't even attempt to sand them or file them. Um, they look really janky. Uh, I could fix that really easily myself, but yeah, both all the pegs just, it looked like they just didn't even waste their time. They just slammed it in and broke it off. Um, but yeah, it was six, 70 bucks. What, what do you, I'm not gonna complain too bad. So that's what this is. Yeah, I just, that was the latest sword that I got, and it came really fast. I got it through True Swords, which when I was first getting into swords a long time ago, I used to order from them all the time, and you learn as you go, and you, you want quality, the, the more money you pay for, you pay for it. But like I said, this, this guy is 70 bucks, and I got it within three days. I ordered it, uh, was it Wednesday night, and then Thursday I got an email, and then Saturday it was at the door before I woke up, which is today. So yeah, that is it. This is the Shinwa Full Tang Fighting Ninja Katana Sword. That's how it's listed on the online catalog. Um, I'm. I, if you guys want to comment about ninja stuff in the comments, go ahead. Um, say what you will about ninja swords, ninjato, the history of them. I just... They're real to me, because they were real to me when I was growing up, and I thought they were awesome and cool. And 90% of things when it comes to swords is, no matter what price you pay or what you want, if you like it, that's all that matters. If you like it, that's all that matters, and screw what everybody else says. So um, just go out and have fun, live your best life, which is what I'm doing with this. So it's winter time, it's the first snow right now, so I have some milk jugs saved up, but I don't know when I'm going to go out cutting stuff again until the, the, the spring when it gets warm again, because Ohio winters get foul and evil, and I hate winter. Um, but that's it. Uh, not a super long video, um, but I just wanted to show off the, uh, the new sword, like I said I would. Oh, before I go, the Saya, <laughs> it's straight. It's just your basic wooden cheap economy Saya. It's got a little ninja symbol painted on right there. But one of the gimmicks this thing has is you're able to pull out this little tube right here and it's supposed to be like a breathing tube if you're underwater, you know. This thing would never work, just whatever, throw it away. If I had to, and I never, ever, ever will be underwater on a ninja mission, ever, but if I had to, just use this part. You know, blow through here, you know, stick that out of the water. That's ridiculous, it's dumb, it's a gimmick, like Skull said. You would never use it in this capacity, but I just think it's kind of cool. I thought it was fun. If you're 15 years old, this is your first sword, you will love this thing, trust me. So if that's all that's holding you back is some old guy telling you to pull the trigger on a cheap ninja sword and do it. So this, I, this comes highly recommended. Um, but before I go, one quick plug on my comic book. I have my first published comic book story. 
in uh, Yeet Presents, their Halloween special. It's towards the middle in the story. It's only four pages, but it's my first story um, of my characters that I created, A Staring. It's a rocket punk space opera. Um, but yeah, if you go to patreon.com slash yeet magazine, uh, this will be the issue that's current, and it's the $5 option. And what you can do, people are scared. They'll think they'll keep being charged. Once you get the ma your copy in the mail, um, when they send it off to you, that's when they charge you. They don't charge you immediately. And then once you get your issue, you can just go there and click cancel one button, and then you'll never be charged again. Um, but yeah, if you want to, and read my very first story ever, uh, like I said, it's Yeet Magazine, Yeet Presents, Halloween Special. It is number 53. So, alrighty guys, I love you and have a wonderful day. Peace out.